Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, again, there are some that I, I mean, I would be thrilled, but also shocked if, if I, heard, if anybody actually did it, but then there are other ones, you know, that on, on the record that, um, are really are pretty jammable. So. Yeah. Well, getting into like the, the production that the whole idea of you produced it with Chris Eldridge, right? Mm -hmm. Um, how did the, how was the concept of the album? How did that kind of come together? Because it does sound like a full, it doesn't just sound like you went and played some tunes um, and right. record some tunes. It sounds like a, a, a you know, a, a piece of, a, a concise piece of work. Um, and so I can tell that there's some planning in, in, in for it. So how did that come across it, come about? And how did you and Chris talk about, you know, before going and recording it? Um, sure it all well so some of these tunes are as old as 2013 some you know i've been and it's been in my mind for a long time that i wanted to make a solo record with a bluegrass instrumentation um you know i i, I don't think it's a it's a stretch for anyone who's familiar with it to listen to my record and be like this is heavily influenced by you know bela flex tales from the acoustic land volume two the bluegrass sessions you know or or drive um and that's yeah drive is definitely some of some of the tunes it's like this this i i feel the drive influence on this definitely yeah i mean i i just i cut my teeth listening to those records those were the records that that drew me in same with like uh chris Thiele's not all who wander are lost like those kinds of tunes that the the way that uh all the instrumentation lays together um, so it's been on my mind a long time. I approached Critter about producing it about a year before the session. And I booked that session almost a year in advance. I mean, that's how hard it is to, to get that group of people together in one room for, for two days of rehearsal and five days of tracking. And that's mm -hmm. all we had. We had two 10 hour days of rehearsal and five full days in the studio to make, to make that record. So Critter and I got together probably at least half a dozen times, kind of workshopped these tunes over, you know, like three or four hours together. And I would kind of, you know, we, we would play them together. We would map things out. Um, at first it was, you know, melodic and structural uh, as in like, um, maybe this melody would work a little bit better if we move this around and, and having Critter, who's just truly one of my favorite rhythm guitar players of all time, who just brings such like, uh, life out of out of my bluegrass playing in a way that you know um, that I hadn't found in many other places mm -hmm. um, w was amazing to get to you know bounce all these ideas off of him and so over the course of about six months leading to the session we did that a bunch you know and then maybe in the last month or two I started doing mock arrangements of of all of the tunes um, and we would play them together. We would play them as a duo, but but uh, playing our parts, um, time them really, you know, because it's just the rehearsal time and studio time was really limited. So I, I wanted to be as prepared as I possibly could, you know, set it up for success as much as you can. And, and things got changed. Things got changed in rehearsal and in studio when when they don't work. But um, but I was also I think pleasantly surprised with like how how much my and my and critters imaginations together actually came through you know, mm -hmm. for us in terms of in terms of arranging like that and how did you arrange for the the each musician well i i mean part of why i chose the musicians that that are playing on the record which i, I can just list off it's it's paul cowart on bass chris eldridge on guitar alex hargraves on fiddle sierra hall on mandolin Casey Campbell on the other half of the mandolin tracks, myself on banjo, and then on a couple of select tracks, my my like lifelong musical buddy Simon Crisman on hammered dulcimer, who he like just transcends that instrument. Uh, he's so he's he's just incredible. You did another in, another album with him. Yeah, uh, we have a duo record yeah. together. Too. Yeah, I checked yeah. out that song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think part of it is that I, I know all of those folks. We've played actually quite a bit of music together. Um, I played a lot of music with Paul and with Critter over the years. Um, I've known Alex since he was like 11. 
he grew up in Oregon and I was in Washington. So we would run into each other at festivals. And, um, he's one of my oldest picking buddies actually. So cool. all these folks I, I know and love and trust. So really what it's about is understanding what they're capable of. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> like all those folks are capable of so much, but basically it's like trusting that if I set up a, a situation like this, I know that Sierra is going to do an amazing job of, of getting from A to B in the way, in the shape that the arrangement is already alluding to. 